Hello, my name is Michael Griggs. I'm the Director of Clinical Services for BRAS. Uh, over the next couple of minutes, I'm going to go over the right panel of the uh, Vivo 65. Uh, so what you look at here is the main power switch, this button switch here, uh, turning the device on and off. Uh, the white connection that you see right here, this is the uh, DC power source. You can add additional battery life to the device. Uh, there is also an accessory little tie into the cellular adapter of the of a car so that you can travel and use the uh, battery uh, on your car rather than the battery uh, on the uh, Vivo 65 as you're traveling. Uh, this connection here, this is your AC power cord slot. You'll notice that the, uh, the plug is a two-prong plug. Uh, the device uh, does ground um, the electrical power on the inside. Um, the, uh, one of the nice features here is that there is a, uh, a clip here that will kind of hold that cord into place so that uh, uh, you can avoid any accidental removal or the cord uh, accidentally being pulled out of the machine. Um, I'm going to skip over this part here briefly and talk about this connection here. This is your uh, O2 inlet. This is where you're going to bleed in your low flow oxygen. Uh, we are FDA approved for up to 15 liters of oxygen to be bled into this to uh, bled into the uh, oxygen nipple right here. Uh, this is where you're going to connect your uh, single limb, the inspiratory limb. Um, well, a single limb circuit will connect here. Uh, but you can also use the Vivo 65 uh, to incorporate dual limb. Uh, so um, moving over to that briefly, uh, this section here, this is our valve inserts. Um, the, um, the way I have the device set up currently is for a single limb circuit. And to uh, remove the inserts, you just simply unlock the insert like so. Okay, so this is the single limb insert. You're going to use this for either a, uh, a single limb active exhalation valve circuit, or you're going to use this insert for a single limb passive circuit. Regardless of the type, um, either the passive or the active, this is the insert that you will use for a, um, a, a single limb circuit. If you do so choose to use a dual limb circuit, you will use one of these um, uh, valves right here. So this is a pediatric exhalation valve. You notice that there's a, a pediatric uh, a small person there on the right hand side, or excuse me, the, the left hand side of the valve, uh, the right hand side of uh, uh, the way I'm uh, facing it right now. Uh, but this insert only goes in one way. Uh, and that is just by simply pushing it into the device and then you've got this little plastic ring that snaps into place. So the way I have it set up right now is now I will use this connection for my single limb, uh, dual limb. Uh, this will be the single limb side of my dual limb circuit and then this will be the expiratory side of the dual limb circuit. Okay. So this is our pediatric valve and this is our adult valve. Okay, you notice that the person um, is larger with this valve. Okay, um, so to talk about these valves very briefly, um, again, you're only going to use these for dual limb circuits. Uh, this is the adult valve, and again, this is the pediatric valve. Now, uh, these valves do not, um, I mean, when you're talking about pediatric and adult uh, choices, um, the uh, uh, valves do not have anything to do with how large the patient size is or how old the patient is. These valves are to be used in uh, conjunction with the parameters that are available on the Vivo 65. Um, so for instance, if you are in a pediatric mode, um, patient mode, then you're going to need to make sure that you're using the pediatric um, expiratory valve. When you are in the uh, adult uh, patient mode, then the valve must match the adult uh, patient mode, so you'll need an adult uh, uh, exhalation valve. Okay. These valves um, uh, are single patient use, uh, so everything is measured within this valve. Uh, water is channeled out. If water goes into this valve, it's just channeled right back out again. 
Uh, pressures, volumes are all measured within these valves. And again, the ventilator will recognize what type of valve is in the machine, so there's no inputting or uh, a need to tell the ventilator what type of valve that you have inserted in the device. Okay, but again, very, very simple to remove, very simple to um, replace. Now there is a little rubber gasket. If you look very closely at the inside of the machine, that rubber gasket uh, must be there, um, and the device will uh, kind of give you a uh, uh, perhaps an exhalation valve air if that valve is not seated correctly. So you want to make sure that uh, gasket, uh, I apologize, I said valve, but you want to make sure that that gasket is seated correctly. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just put the single limb insert back into the machine again and just lock it into place. All right. Uh, so also we have some connections here on the right panel. They're all labeled. Uh, this connection, uh, we'll start with this one here. This is your FiO2 connection. Uh, so the Vivo 65 does have the ability to measure the FiO2 delivered to the patient by using an external O2 sensor. Uh, so we're going to be bleeding in low flow oxygen here and we will have uh, FiO2 measurement uh, connection uh, right here, okay? And that just simply snaps into place. And then uh, we have a T-piece that is placed here in line, and the FiO2 simply goes just like so, okay? So that's our FiO2 connection. Uh, to remove this connection, you're just simply going to pull back on the gray uh, cover here. You just simply pull back, it'll unlock it from the machine, and you can go ahead and just pull that connection out. It only goes in one way. You want to just match your colors. White goes with white, and again, that snaps into place. You do not want to just pull on that. Uh, again, you're just going to pull back on that uh, sheath, and then uh, the... Uh, um, it will uh, unlock the uh, connection from the machine. The next connection here is labeled CO2. Uh, we use a Massimo uh, adapter, okay? Uh, a, a Massimo uh, mainstream sensor. Again, the uh, device just connects just like so, and uh, our O2 sensor is, or excuse me, our uh, end tidal CO2 sensor is connected. Okay, it's just blinking red right now. I don't have uh, the adapter connected to the machine or to the uh, sensor. Okay, so that is our uh, N-Tuttle CO2 connection. And then uh, in blue, we also have SpO2. Okay, so we also use Massimo technology for the SpO2. Uh, that SpO2 simply clicks into place. Blue goes with blue. And, uh, and then we just connect our O2 um, the finger probe or uh, a flex sensor. Um, if the customer already has uh, Massimo uh, finger probes and whatnot, that also can be uh, can be used in uh, this module. Okay, uh, so that is our end title, our FiO2, our end title CO2, and our SpO2 connections. And then last but not least, this green connection is for remote uh, start and stop. If, uh, uh, for say, it's a, uh, you've got the device attached to the back of a wheelchair and uh, perhaps uh, the alarm goes off on the device, we have a uh, uh, kind of a, um, a remote uh, start or silence of an alarm, start and stop, uh, putting the device into standby as well as uh, silencing the alarm. Uh, and that's what this connection is for, okay? So uh, that is basically the right panel of the device, and I appreciate everybody's time and um, look for the next video uh, for what the uh, main um, uh, the main screen um, and navigation through the main screen. Thank you very much.